Yes, you can now finally use your iPad as an external HDMI monitor for pretty much anything. And I'm so happy this is finally here because it really feels like this has been one of the key missing features of the iPad pretty much since it came out. And thanks to iPad OS 17 and all the extra features it brought, this is now a reality, which is awesome. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up, all the apps and extra little bits that you'll need. I've done a huge gaming test as well, with loads of different consoles to see how it is for things like input lag and for frame rates. And I'm also gonna show you a bunch of interesting little features which I found for it as well, which have been really, really awesome. And I do want to make it clear from the get-go, this isn't perfect, but it's still really awesome. So let's get straight into it. Let's talk about the physical setup first because there's a few things you're definitely going to need here. First up is an iPad with USB-C. So that's the iPad Pro from 2018 or higher, the iPad Air 4 or higher, the iPad Mini from 2021 or higher, or the iPad 10th Gen. Unfortunately, any iPad with a lightning port just isn't going to work with this. You're then going to need a USB-C capture card. I've got one here from Gimok, I think it's called. It's a really odd name, but anyone will do which goes directly into USB-C. And luckily these are quite cheap. I think I paid 20 pounds for mine. You then set up your console like normal, but rather than plug the HDMI into a screen or a TV, you plug it into the capture card and then you plug that directly into the iPad. And that's everything you need in a physical sense. After that's all set up, you're gonna to want to head to the app store and download an app called Orion. This app is what's going to enable all of that setup so you can use your iPad as an external monitor. And I do wanna shout out Orion here because this is a really incredibly styled app. They've done a really, really good job of it and it feels like you're unboxing an old CRT display. They've done a really nice job of stylizing how the whole thing looks. It is free from the get-go, but if you spend $4.99 to unlock all the features, which is what I did, because I don't think that's too expensive, you get 4K AI upscaling, which is awesome, and you get a bunch of other CRT effects. So if you plug it in a retro console, you can get that old look. So after opening Orion, you then plug your capture card into the iPad, and you should be good to go. Everything should be working. So obviously the first thing I wanted to do with this was to try it with the Nintendo Switch and Tears of the Kingdom. And honestly, I was just so shocked that this worked first. I was kind of blown away of just how nice it looks on the iPad screen. And it was great. But the first thing I pretty much noticed off the bat was the input lag, especially on the Nintendo Switch. It was kind of noticeable straight away. And if you're playing a game like Super Smash Bros or any first person shooters, this is absolutely going to affect the performance. It wasn't great on there. However, with Zelda or other games which are a bit more of a slower pace, it was absolutely fine. And I actually got used to the input lag relatively quickly. I also tried the 4K AI upscaling on Orion here because the Switch's output is relatively low compared to the other consoles. And it was pretty decent. It was kind of interesting to see it kind of upscale. It just made everything look a little bit sharper but I actually ended up turning this off because it kind of highlights the ugly points as well, which isn't great. I think it just looks nicer as is. So after trying it out of the Switch, I tried it then with the Xbox Series S, and actually I was really surprised to notice straight away how much less input lag there was. This was actually a much nicer experience. And while that input lag is very much still there, I tried out games like Lies of P and getting things like a perfect parry or a perfect dodge on there is very, very difficult. You can get used to that lag relatively quickly and play the game in an enjoyable way. I also tried out Bioshock Infinite on here and that was much better. And I think because that game doesn't rely on super accurate inputs, it was a much nicer experience. So the Xbox did have better performance than the Switch, which wasn't something I was overly expecting, considering when you plug both of those into a TV, they're absolutely fine. But obviously I had to try this out with the PS5 as well, and I was pretty shocked to see this, but the second I plugged the PS5 in, I experienced very little to no lag at all. I tried out Jedi Survivor with the PS5, which requires a lot of very accurate inputs, especially in combat when you need those perfect dodges or perfect parries or anything like that. And the experience was decent. I actually managed to get through a really tough section I had been struggling with at home just on the iPad. And that was really awesome. I also tried out a bit of Persona 5 and obviously as a slower paced game, this was absolutely fine with lag. And after the PS5 performed so well compared to the other two consoles, it actually made me think maybe it's a connection or a wire. So I went back and tested out the Switch and the Xbox with the PS5 HDMI cable and lo and behold, the lag was way, way better which is really, really weird to see, but I'm guessing it's down to the quality and the speed of the HDMI cable. Even though I thought the Xbox had a really powerful one, apparently the one that came with the PS5 seems to handle this much better. And that was really awesome to see. So the rest of my experience 
was good. There's still that tiny bit of lag you can just about tell, so if you're trying to be competitive, this isn't the way to do it, but this is an awesome result. And if you're going away somewhere and you just wanna use your iPad with a console or with anything else, this is a really awesome way to do it. And I was absolutely stoked with the results. I also couldn't help but try out my SNES with this as well and try out those CRT features on the Orion app. I bought this little connector which takes the RGB from my SNES and turns it into an HDMI. And this was great on the iPad and playing with those CRT things really made it feel like my childhood again when I was just sitting down playing Mario or Sonic or something like that. A really cool feature and again, there is that tiny bit of input lag but this is just another cool way to use it. And it was really weird just hooking up my SNES to something as futuristic as an iPad. I obviously didn't want to end things there. As a creative, I wanted to try this out with other stuff as well. So my first port of call was to try this out with a Mac. And even with that PS5 cable, you can kind of tell the input lag almost immediately. And it just didn't make it very nice to use. I think most of us are really used to how a mouse or a trackpad feels that this just fell off straight away. Although it is usable and you could get away with it no problem, I wouldn't recommend using it in this way unless there's a way to completely eliminate that lag. If you want to take something like a Mac Studio or a Mac Mini with you on the move somewhere and just to use your iPad as the monitor, then you can. I also wanted to shout out as well, you can use this as a camera monitor, which is actually what I'm doing right now to film this video. I've got my iPad Mini just sitting over there, which has got my complete video feed on it, which is awesome. You could connect this to a camera in some sort of rig and get a really nice kind of big screen to work with. This is something I know creatives have been asking for for a really long time. So to see it, even with that tiny bit of input lag, is fantastic. So let's talk about the good things and the bad things of this. On the good side of things, I can confirm that the frame rate seems to hold up. So all the games I tried out, which were 60 frames per second, held up absolutely fine on the iPad. I don't have any games which go over that right now, and I don't think the capture card I'm using can take up to 120 hertz but I'm sure if it did, it would, especially on the iPad Pros, which have 120 hertz refresh rate. I can't see why that wouldn't work absolutely fine because right now it's running really nicely. And the other good thing is the Orion app itself. The whole look of it is awesome, like I've said, but actually getting those extra features are really cool too. And while I think the 4K AI upscaling is kind of nice if you like that kind of sharper look, and on the PS5 and Xbox, it did sharpen things up really nicely. I think on some consoles like the Switch, it just doesn't really benefit from that. It can highlight kind of the weak areas for it. And to me, this looks like someone's just dragged a Photoshop filter over it and just sharpened it up. So I'm gonna leave that one off, but if you like it, it's there and you can use it. It's a cool little feature. And the CRT stuff in there as well is just awesome. Even though that's a little bit gimmicky, if you're plugging in retro consoles, it just looks great. Oh, and the final good one is you can charge your iPad at the same time. So you can plug your USB-C capture card into a dongle along with a charger and then plug that into the iPad so you get constant power as well. And the best thing of this is, is really the sky's the limit. You can plug anything into your iPad now and use it for absolutely anything. Even if you do just want to hook a Blu-ray player up to it or something else like that, or you just want an extra monitor on the go for Windows or something which doesn't rely on a wireless connection, you can now. Obviously, in terms of downsides, the big one here is lag. If you want to be competitive, or if you need that constant up-to-date feed and look, then this isn't going to be it for you. Obviously, if you're just watching something like YouTube videos or watching a film or something like that, this is going to be absolutely fine. But otherwise, if you can't even stand a tiny bit of lag, this isn't gonna be it for you. And also, there's quite a lot of screen tearing going on here. You've probably seen this in some of the gameplay demos and other stuff I've had going on, but it's really prevalent in games where you turn around, you can see the screen kind of do a bit of this. I mean, if you've got something like trees in the screen or something like that, or anything straight, you can really tell. And this could be down to the capture card itself. If you end up buying a more expensive one, or if you look for a more specific one, you can probably eliminate that. That's definitely worth highlighting. And something with the Orion app itself as well is it's not quite perfect yet. I've had loads of times where I plug in a console or my Mac or something and no sound comes out of it at all. I always get video, but sometimes I just don't get sound. And it doesn't matter how many times I've plugged that in and out, it just doesn't work. So sometimes I have to delete the Orion app, re-download it, and then it works again. So whether that's a software bug which will get eliminated at some point, or if it's something wrong with my capture card or setup, then I just don't know right now, but that's very much a feature. So be careful for that one. So yeah, like I said at the start of this video, it's not perfect yet, but this is still really cool and I'm really happy it's here. So that just about rounds up this video. I'm really, really happy with this feature. And again, it's just the iPad finally unlocking more stuff, which is great. 
If you've been using the Orion app and have some other features and uses for the iPad, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you've been using it for. And if you enjoyed this video, consider signing up to my newsletter. I love sharing little bits and bobs about everything I do behind the scenes and how I run this channel. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And as ever, I will see you all in the next one.